everyone, I'm Ellie Eberts and today I'm going to be showing you a little bit about my bodice for my Strawberry Ichigo cosplay. I think that this bodice is really, really cute. I had a lot of fun making it and there are some really cool techniques involved. So I can't wait to show you some of the details. Now, fair warning, I made this when I was in a bit of a con crunch, so I wasn't able to film as much of the sewing process as I normally do. So some of it is just going to be me telling you how I made it and showing you pictures. So let's go ahead and get started. So first things first, I'm going to start by cutting out all of my materials. I am using a basic princessine bodice. Believe it or not, this is the same pattern that I use for my new Ichigo cosplay. I just shortened it at the waist. So this is a basic princessine bodice that I know fits me really, really well. I'm cutting it out of my fashion layer, which is this beautiful magenta fabric, my duck canvas, which will be my support for my bones, and my lining, which I chose this really cute strawberry lining. I think it's the most cute thing ever. <laughs> so I have cut out all my pieces. The first thing I'm going to be doing is adding all the bones. It's important to add your bones first as this is what gives you support and it's also going to change the fit of the material. So make sure to add your bones first. So I am adding some channels to my duck canvas layer made of strips of duck canvas. Duck canvas is a really thick material that is used a lot for like automobiles and outdoor furniture. Um, but I use it as a strengthening layer for most of my bodices. It's a lot like Cotoul, 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 Cotoul. It's a lot like Cotoul, which I don't even know if that's how you say it, but that's the material that is used for like professional corsets. I am adding my bones to my duck canvas layer with other strips of duck canvas and I am simply stitching this on with a straight stitch. First, I stitch the channel, then I insert the bone and finish off the channel with another stitch. For this bodice, I ended up using six half inch flat steel bones. I prefer flat steel bones to spiral steel. I think they give you a bit more support than a spiral steel bone does and that's what I'm looking for when I'm using bones. I'm looking for support and a little bit of shapewear. So I definitely use flat steel for all my bones. Once I had my bones installed, I went ahead and basted on my fashion layer onto the duck canvas layer. So using a basting stitch, I simply stitched along the edges of all of my pieces, attaching my fashion layer to my duck canvas layer. Now, after this, I put everything together with a basting stitch and tried it on. Now this was really, really important to me that I got the fit right, so I had to try it on before I went any further. Thankfully, it fit perfectly on the first try. That's what's so nice about having a princess seam bodice that you've made for yourself and that you know fits you really, really well. It's easy to just make it and keep going. So once I knew that everything fit perfectly, I went ahead and unstitched everything. I ripped out those basting stitches and then it was time to embroider my strawberry seam. Now Ichigo's bodice looks like a strawberry, so I am using some tan colored embroidery floss and adding little seeds onto all of the panels. Now the illustration does show that these would be black seeds. However, for the rest of my strawberries on this costume, I also used tan seeds, so I wanted to keep that cohesiveness and I think that the tan color matches the rest of the color palette and looks a little bit brighter uh, rather than the black, which just would have been kind of dark and might have looked like stains or something. These look very, very specific and intentional. So I am going ahead and just randomly embroidering seeds. These are little egg shapes that I am simply embroidering all over the bodice. This is pretty simple embroidery and I'm not an embroidery pro, so I am just kind of winging it and putting them wherever I feel like it. Once all of my pieces had their seeds embroidered on them, it's now time to add my zipper. Now I know, normally you would add your zipper at the very, very end. However, I am using a front center separating zipper and through previous experience, I have found that it's best to install your zipper before doing anything else. I am installing my separating zipper on the center front of my two center front panels. I also ended up having a zipper that was a bit longer than I needed it to be. So after trimming off the top, I used some stoppers like you would use on necklaces or beading and I crimped those onto the top of my zipper to make sure that it wouldn't come undone and my zipper foot wouldn't come flying off. All right, so now that we have our zipper installed, 
it is time to stitch our pieces together. Now, this is something I say all the time, but the reason I say it all the time is because it's really, really important. You need to stitch your fashion layer and your lining layer at the same time. This way you make sure that you do all the stitches exactly the same and you use the same seam allowance. This is really, really important. Unless you're marking your seam allowance, in which case you're fine. But I don't mark my seam allowance, so if I don't stitch it at the exact same time, I'm gonna end up with one that has half inch seam allowance and one that has three quarters inch and then it's not gonna fit. So it's very important to stitch these at the same time. Once all of our pieces are stitched together, we're ready to start adding details. I'm going to start by adding these little arm poofs. Now, I wasn't sure how to make these at first, but what I did is I ended up just taking a tube of my crepe de chenille, just a long tube that I stitched together on the inside and then pressed open. Then I pleated this on top of the bust and onto the center back as well. After that, we were ready to attach our lining layer. So I put my fashion layer on top of my lining layer with right sides touching and I stitched around the zipper the top of the bodice and then the other side of the zipper. I left the entire bottom edge of my bodice open. Now we get to add the finishing detail to the bottom of the bodice. I'm finishing my bodice with some handmade piping. I think piping is a really great way to finish bodices. It looks really, really clean and it adds an extra detail that you don't always get on a regular bodice. After I made my piping, I attached it to the hem of my fashion layer. Then I turned that over and pressed it flat. Once it was pressed flat, I went through and then hand stitched the lining layer to the piping. This gives us a really, really, really clean finish and I think it looks incredible on the inside. When it comes to making bodices, it's really important to me that the inside looks just as nice as the outside. Even though nobody's ever gonna see the inside, it just feels good when you're putting it on to know that the whole bodice looks really beautiful. Okay, so now that the main bodice is constructed, it's time to make the front panel. Now this front panel is what's going to be covering our zipper. So we are going to be stitching one edge of this panel onto the bodice, and then the other edge is going to have a whole bunch of snaps that are going to attach it to the other edge of the bodice. Now, if this method seems similar, it's because it's the same thing I did for Lucia when I made her a few years ago. I think that this is a really great way to hide zippers and make your bodice look completely seamless. It also makes it super easy to take on and off, which is really important to me. <laughs> I have now become one of those cosplayers that is definitely comfort over looks. So the fact that I can take this off in like 30 seconds and then crash on my hotel bed is incredible. Like, yes, please, thank you. So to make this, I first started by taking a layer of duck canvas and cutting it to be approximately the shape that I wanted. I had my bodice laid out on my counter and I was just kind of playing around until I got a shape that I think matched the illustration. After that, I also cut two layers of my crepe de chenille in the same size. Once I had my shape in the way I liked, I went ahead and stitched around the edges. I stitched the bottom pointed edge one edge of the sides and then the top flat edge as well. Leaving open one side edge that's eventually gonna get covered by ribbons so we don't really have to worry about it. Now I can go ahead and start adding some details. After that, it was time to add the ribbon for the edges. I pinned this ribbon along both edges of my front plaque and then I stitched it on through all the layers. Now it's time to attach this plaque to our bodice. I have pinned it into place centering the point with the bottom of my zipper and now I'm going to go through and machine stitch along the edges of the ribbon on the side that attaches to our bodice. So I have machine stitched both sides of the ribbon onto the bodice. This not only helps encapsulate that raw edge from our plaque, but it also makes sure that it's gonna hold really steady and it's not gonna move around. So that has been stitched on. So now I am attaching some snaps onto the other side of our plaque. These are about an inch apart and they also have a corresponding snap on the other side of the bodice. And this is how we close this plaque to hold everything in place. The last thing we are adding is this giant satin ribbon bow and some berries. And the one final thing that I added to this bodice is a bar at the center back. 
This corresponds with a hook that is attached to my tail and helps my tail stay up when I'm wearing my Ichigo costumes. And now our strawberry bodice is finished. I adore this bodice. The fit of it is absolutely perfect and the way it cinches in at the waist and then you have the giant petticoat, it just creates a really, really beautiful silhouette and I am so happy with it. Well, I hope you guys enjoyed taking a look at this bodice with me. I know that this wasn't as um, tutorial focused, I guess, as a lot of my build vlogs are since I just wasn't able to film a lot of it because I was running around like a crazy man. Uh, but I did it, it's done, we're here, hooray. <laughs> So again, I really hope you guys enjoyed this. If you did, please leave a thumbs up. You can find more photos, videos, and work in progress stuff on this costume on my Instagram, at Ellie Everts. So please go and follow me there. I share lots of really cute photos. At least I think they're really cute. So please go follow me, thank you. <laughs> so I think that concludes our wedding Ichigo build vlogs. I'm not sure if I'll do any more, but if I do, I guess there'll be bonuses. So that is that. Thank you guys so, so, so much for all your support on this costume. It really, really means the world to me. I'm glad you guys like it as much as I do. And if you want to see more of my future videos like Mew Lettuce, I know lots of you have been asking for her. She'll be coming soon. So be sure to subscribe and push that bell button so you'll get a notification when my videos come out. Until next time, everyone, thank you so much for watching and I hope you're having a great day. Until next time, be sure to keep sewing, stay positive, and have fun. I will see you all later. Okay, bye. Ba -ba 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 -ba.